All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday Night Live. Thank you so much for coming out. We have such a special show this evening, but I have a couple things I want to mention before that. Um, for those of you that are new to Monday Night Live and may not exactly know what we do here, um, the Monday Night Live crew, which tonight is Ben Mars on bass, Dave Ducharme Jones on guitar, Russ Tomlinson back there on the drums. So what happens is that Monday Night Live crew uh, gets a set list, a song list from the artists that we bring in, and they start kind of hammering away at learning that material. So by the time we meet with our artist, they're familiar with their music, sometimes more familiar with their music than the person who's been out playing it. You know, they're really listening to the record. And so these guys really put in some work. And we had Jamie McLean coming in from Brooklyn. He's a friend of Ben's, and so we were just so lucky that he agreed to join us. So he came in yesterday. We got together with him last night, kind of did some jams out at Ben's farm. And, um, and then they uh, did their rehearsal here before during sound check. So that's what we do. We kind of put these shows together, but there's a lot of work that goes in. So I just want to let the people know that may not be familiar with how Monday Night Live works. Um, and, and one of the ways that we take care of these guys is through donations that you guys make during the show. So at some point during the show, I'll come through with a bucket and um, you can throw a little cash in there. There's also a card on your table that will take you to a Venmo account. If you'd like to Venmo a tip, That'd be great. We'll make sure, yeah, we've, we've got the card. We'll make sure that, that the guys get the money. Um, next month, we have Annie Kemble joining us. That's going to be a great show, and that will be the last Monday in April. Um, and then we have one more coming up, which will just kind of be an end-of-year party. Monday Night Live is going to do Monday Night Live, so it'll be regular Monday Night Live performers performing. And... Um, one other thing, on, on uh, Sunday this coming week, we have a benefit that's going to be happening at Lefties for Byron's. So if you haven't had an opportunity, or even if you have, um, to attend any of the other benefits, there's, there's going to be another one after this, maybe more than that. But um, we will be at uh, Byron's with Clint Rydell um, and uh, Brother Trucker. Ducharme Jones, and um, Stutter and Jimmy. So it'll be a full afternoon of music. I think the doors are at 3. There's going to be some silent auction, and then the music is from 4 until probably about 9, you know, something like that. We won't keep you too late, but uh, please join us at Lefties on Sunday afternoon. Um, let me see. Was there anything else I needed to share with you guys? I think that's about it. Please give a warm welcome for Jamie McLean when he gets up here. We're just so happy to have him. Thanks so much. Welcome, thanks for coming out. It's great to be here.
Uh, it's great to be here. We've got a lot of music, and uh, we'll talk about all the all the, the 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 good old days Ben Mars and I have had along the way, and all the records we've recorded. Uh, but this next one is uh, the first single off my latest record. This is a song about finding a passion in your life and uh, following wherever that may lead you. This is called This Is It. Packed it up and headed for the 
that got steady Found a paradise near Mexico Jack needs action He put a fishing line off of the shore
Thank you so much. That song goes a, a while back there uh, when a very young, very young Ben Mars was wrapping up his uh, college education. And I offered him some employment on the rock and roll highway of life. And uh, this next song is the title track off of the first album that Big Benny came out on the road. We put on a, uh, we threw a hell of a party in New York City for this one. Esquire Magazine sponsored this beautiful party. And uh, my mom came and there was a, a step and repeat in the front with a photographer and she, she felt, she, she thought she was suddenly in Hollywood or something. Everyone wanted to take her picture and she was up there and um, the Mars family, I believe, flew up for the occasion. Mike and Nancy Mars came up and got down and partied with us, and Ben rode on the backside of his base. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Don't have that base here anymore. No, he doesn't have that base But here thanks, today. Dad. But thanks, Dad. And this is my mom's, uh, one of them. This is, my, this is one of my mom's very favorite songs that I've written. This is... It's a love song, really. It's called Completely. We're gonna make it on 
Dave Ducharme on the guitar, y'all. Hometown hero. Are we having a good time so far? What a beautiful, well, new venue to me, relatively new to town. What a beautiful venue you have here. You guys should be proud. They got a great thing going on. And uh, appreciate you having me. Uh, so we, we tour all over the country. Big Ben Mars and I have uh, logged many miles up and down the highway. And for whatever reason, we always seem to end up in Virginia somewhere. And uh, one day while we were driving through, looking out at the uh, beautiful mountains in southwestern Virginia, I uh, started singing this song to myself. And uh, this is called Virginia. On the record that Ben is on, uh, we brought in the great, the, probably the greatest living mandolin player in the world, the great Sam Bush. And um, you can hear him on the recording. I can't believe we convinced him to come, but once he came, he never wanted to leave. So he's on the whole album. And uh, this is called Virginia. Yeah. 
people here have been down to New Orleans, Louisiana before? Anybody been down to the Big Easy? They know how to have a good time down there, I tell you what. I spent a long time living in New Orleans. I had the honor and privilege of making music with the great Aaron Neville, as well as those rascals in the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. Is it all right with you if we take it down to New Orleans for just a minute, get a little funky up in here? Is that all right? This is a song we used to do with the great Dr. John. It's a song about having a good time. Les le bon temps roulé. Have a little glass of wine. Whatever you need to do to get in the mood, you know. It's called Junko Partner. Yeah, you're right. Here I put it, I put up and I 
here in Des Moines. Yes, indeed. A number of uh, a number of the recent albums have been recorded down in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, that's where we linked up with Sam Bush. Um, the next song that we're going to perform is the title track off of our one and only album. Uh, it was produced by Ken Coomer of the band Wilco. And um, I think Ben Mars just sings like an angel on this. This is called One and Only.
love stories deep down. This next one's about champagne. It's a love-hate relationship. Love it at night. Next day, not so sure. The bubbles start to fade a little bit. This is called Yesterday's Champagne.
Thank you so much. Like I said, they're all love songs. But this one uh, is about someone sp specific. And uh, I think everybody in here could probably relate in one way or another. Um, this is on the same record that I was talking to, talking about earlier. That, Ben joined us on down in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, once I get tuned up here, this is one of my favorite songs on the record. It's not something we play all the time because we need a nice, beautiful, quiet, attentive audience like yourselves. I'm not afraid to express my feelings. This is called Not Today. I think about the time when we went out When our love was true Put away your picture frames But it burns inside my brain The night we said I do
Thank you so much. All well, right. We're going to send the buckets around, everybody. You know, the, you know the drill. And for those of you that uh, maybe it's your first time here for Monday Night Live, this is how we do it. This is how we pay these artists. He came all the way from New York City, everybody, to play for you. Let's send him home with some love, OK? While you're, while you're filling them with those buckets, I've got to ask, is it all right if we play a little bit of blues here tonight on a Monday? This is one we've been playing for quite some time. Fan favorite. God damn. I didn't bring my readers. Yeah, we'll do create. We'll do the blues. We're gonna play the blues right now. This is a uh, another another love song right here. Just a different kind of love song. Someone she takes her stuff, puts it out there on the front porch. Monday Night Blues, this is called Crazy About You. You took all my best guitars 
change your name. You can change your hair color. I still want you. I can't tell you what a great spot you have here. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting live music on a Monday night. That is a big deal. This handsome gentleman over here called me up and said, man, what you doing on a Monday night? You want to come down to Des Moines? I said, what? I said, of course I'm coming, Benny. And, uh, We've had a great time, a couple of days here. We had a rehearsal with these fine gentlemen. Make some noise for the band. These guys <laughs> learned damn near 30 songs. Just pulled them out of the ether, showed up like we've been uh, playing together for years. Um, you guys have a great scene going on here and uh, hope to come back again real soon. <laughs> I, um, I dream music very often, and uh, most of the time I dream songs and I think, oh man, that's a hit. I'm gonna remember that one when I wake up in the morning, and poof, never remember those. Then I got smart and I said, well, I better um, get my phone out or something and I'm gonna sing it into the phone, and that way when I wake up, it'll be there. Nine times out of ten, it's either just kind of gi sleepy gibberish, or one time I sang a complete Wallflowers song, front to back, one headlight by the Wallflowers. <laughs> Jacob Dylan would come for that royalty money. You had that pen, didn't you? Could have been that. But this song, I got up and I sang it into the phone. The next morning, I came down and said, that's a pretty good song. And uh, it's a song that I think... Everyone here can relate to someone in their lives. I think often about my late father, Terry McLean, and this is called The Ghost of You.
picture sitting on my phone I slow dance and I'm alone With the ghost of you Ghost of you Ghost of you Yeah, ghost of you Ten out of head the strength Ghost to you, thank you. Not a Wallflowers tune, a Jamie McLean original. We played some blues, played some love songs. Can we play some rock and roll in Des Moines on a Monday night? Dad? Spin of your new perfume 
Monday night. I see the dance party happening. Are we having a good time tomorrow? We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do one more song and let everybody go and uh, refresh their beverages. Um, we're gonna have a quick little interview here, and then we're gonna come back for a whole nother set. So stick around. You can check that basketball score on your phone. Everybody, stay here. And um, this next song is written by one of my personal heroes, uh, one of my career highlights, and, and probably the same for Ben Mars here, was the time we got to do a summer tour with the great Greg Allman. And um, toured all over the Midwest. And we stayed at Nancy Mars's house out there on Diamond Lake and barbecued, and we thought we were bona fide rock stars. And Greg Allman came back right after we finished and uh, said, man, y'all lit a fire out there on that stage. I'm pretty damn sure he was never in the building for our set, but I'm always gonna say, <laughs> Greg Allman was a big Jamie McLean band fan. Love the music. It's going out to uh, the memory of Greg. Let's reboot. I tune because I care. I'm gonna blame Delta Airlines for this snafu. How long you had that thing back? This is my baby right here. I, this I little know. blondie is. How long have I had that? Thirty years. That dates me. I'm just 28. <laughs> been playing, but I've been playing for about 30. <laughs> so the late great Greg Allman.
for coming out. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. J.B. McLean, everybody. Stick around. We got another set coming. I don't need a new car, mine still starts Got a couple of dents, but still hold some spark I don't want a new dog, mine still barks She's got a couple of fleas, but holds her own at the park And I'm just kicking back, smelling the flowers My life's worth more than just chasing a dollar I'd say pretty good, it's good enough for me
difference between your teeth You are not my friend Pouring little cups of tea Humming a little tune You sit across from me Fill my little room Little God Smoke is in the air From your little cigarettes You tell me They talk behind your back All these people that you
permission to respond to all the threats and the rhetorical speeches of the Soviet. Mr. Putin said we will bury you. I don't subscribe to his point of view. It'd be such an ignorant thing to do if the Russians love their children. for you I would take a fall for you anything I have to do just to prove my love for you I would sell my soul for you and tell God it was something I just had to do sacrifice eternity for you strangest thing and love will make you do the strangest thing and love will make you do the strangest thing we'll make your way back to your tables chairs. We're going to get ready to start the interview and then the second set. First of all, thank you all so much for joining us. I want to just give everybody a big round of applause here for being here on Monday night and supporting live music in Des Moines. We appreciate you very much. 
And next, I want to thank Jamie McLean for joining us from New York. I mean, it's a big commitment to get on an airplane and come to Iowa for a couple of days, right? And interrupt your life. Yep, there he is. It was a roller coaster ride yesterday. But we're here. No, it's, I'm, I'm happy, very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So it's, you know, how is Iowa a little different from Brooklyn? <laughs> ben and I did a little, well, and, and Ben is further uh, west, yeah, is that Adel. right? Yeah, Adel. He's out in Adel. So we did a little driving today, and I think we saw one other car. <laughs> and um, that was you. Uh, no, it's nice. I mean, uh, I, love, I, I do love where I live. I'm in, I'm, I'm in Brooklyn, and I'm in a um, quiet neighborhood, so it's not like big skyscrapers and crazy, but still a lot of people, and um, I travel a lot, so it's nice to to get out of the city and just relax. Yeah, it's been great. So when, you know, when I first met Jamie last night, we kind of, we went over to Ben's farm and got together and did a little um, rehearsal and had dinner, just cooked us a fabulous meal. But, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, do you by chance have any Iowa connections, right? And much to my surprise. I do. My mother was born in the same hospital that Ben was born in. Mercy. In Des Moines. My mother was born in Mercy Hospital and um, lived in Des Moines for a little while. And she uh, grew up on a farm in Waukee. And um, her name is Catherine. And her nickname is Kitty because on the farm, um, she liked the horses and stuff, but she fell in love with a little kitty cat that would run around the farm. And so my gran uh, her grandparents started calling her Kitty. And um, yeah, my mom's from Des Moines, really Waukee, Iowa. <clears throat> and she said, we're not, we haven't gotten to the bottom of this factually, but she said my great grandfather, Johnny Boy O'Rourke. Anybody remember him? Anybody remember Johnny Boy <laughs> O'Rourke? <laughs> Apparently he built, my mom said he built all the roads and bridges here, but I think it's a little I think maybe he built like maybe he might have built one bridge. Well, back then but, there might not have been that many roads. Yeah, and yeah, bridges. built the only bridge. So uh, <laughs> yeah, there is there is a lot of family history here, and um, it's always good to be back. And then obviously the the Mars family, um, so lovely and have taken us in so many times. So we always love being here. It's great to be back. I, I love that. Is your mom watching tonight? I don't, she barely knows how to use her cell phone. I don't think okay. she knows how to do that. <laughs> but I'll send her the yeah. link. I'll send her the link. Well, that is wonderful. So anyway, it's just such a treat. It's such a treat to be able to bring an artist in and spend time and get to know each other. By the time we finish these shows, we're always friends with whoever we've had the opportunity to play with. So really, the connections are so important. So, uh, but I want to hear a little bit about um, your musical journey, because I know you played with a lot of people before you found your way into your own writing and your own, whoops, and your own um, performing. Tell us a little bit about that journey and how you ended up feeling, you know, I told you I love that word compulsion, how you felt compelled to start writing your own stuff. Yeah, well, I started playing guitar when I was about 13, and I one morning my mom came to get me out of bed to go to school. You're, you're not out of bed, it's time to get out of bed. And I just sat up and for whatever reason, like a bolt of lightning, I said, I think I should play guitar. And my mom was like, that's fine, get out of bed. <laughs> you're, late for, you're still late for school. But there was, there was a moment there, um, call it whatever you want. And a calling a calling, and um, so I started playing a little bit, and at the same time, my brother started playing drums. He's really passionate. He n has gone on now. He's the drummer for The Lion King on Broadway, the oh, Broadway wow. show Lion King. Super talented. So we would go down in the basement and make all kinds of racket down there together, and God bless my mom for putting up with that noise, but we practiced and practiced, and as it went on, we had a band in college, and or um, high school, 
And then we went our separate ways for college. And after I graduated, my brother lived in Colorado. I went out to join him, to start a band, and ski a lot. So I was a little <laughs> ski bum for a second. But we played a ton of music in Boulder, Colorado. Got to open up for a ton of big name acts. And that's where I met the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. So from New Orleans, Louisiana, the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. And they um, uh, really liked my playing. And they said, next time we come through, you should come jam with us. And typically, when a band says, you know, come sit in for a song, it's usually towards the end or the encore or something like that. They called me up on the first song, which I thought was a little strange. Nice. And I said, OK, first song. All right, well, I'll be out of here early. And every time I tried to leave, they said, no, stay, stay, stay. So I played two sets of music with them. I had never heard any of their songs. I just called, they Improv, yeah. Hey, B flat, F, you know, go for it. I'd, and I'm 22, no idea what I'm doing up there. But they had a good time. And then they said, um, we're playing in Vail and Aspen this weekend. Do you want to come play with us there? And I said, cool. Absolutely. This is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Drove up there. And after the show in Vail, they said, well, the next gig's in San Diego. And it's the beginning of a six-week tour with us and the Funky Meters. And it goes through Canada and ends at the New Orleans Jazz Festival. Do you need to go home and get a toothbrush? And that's You're like, hell no. And that's how you get hired to be in the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. <laughs> so, I, so I did. I went home and I got a toothbrush. I needed, I needed a passport. We were going to Canada. And I gave my brother a hug. And I said, I think I just joined the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. And he said, go for it. And uh, the tour did end at uh, the Jazz Festival in New Orleans. If you haven't been to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, yeah. it's the last week in April and the first week of May every year, and it is a must do. It is the most fun you will ever have. Food, music, culture, vibe, it's a blast. So w when that finished, I just lived, I moved to New Orleans, and then I was a New Orleans oh, cool. resident. I just never left, so. Then I was in the, New in the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. This is a long, this is a long story. That's all right. We're almost done. And I played with the Dirty Dozen Brass Band for seven years. We went all over the world. We, we would do Japan twice a year. We'd go to Brazil. We'd go to Europe two or three times a year. I've been to Guam. I've, I mean, places just everywhere. And uh, gotten to play with all of these heroes. Met Nora Jones before anyone knew who she was. We're going to record tomorrow with this girl from Blue Note. OK, what's her name? I don't know. She's uh, she p plays piano. She's from Blue Note. And then she, they come in and say, "Hey, I'm Nora Jones." And little Nora, how I don't even know how old she was. The second she started singing, I right. literally jaw dropped. And then the next week, it would come away with me in the night. Right. And she was huge. Right. And uh, Madison Square Garden, Elvis Costello, Dave Matthews, Greg. I mean, just met all my heroes and. Um, Hurricane Katrina hit, and New Orleans was uh, problematic, to say the least. And it was also a time when I was really starting to write my own songs. And I could tell that they weren't necessarily songs for the Dirty Dozen. And I kind of came and kinda I said... Kind of time to break away and... Yeah, it yeah. was uh, just the time. I came to the guys, and I, s I didn't know how to break it to them. And I was like, guys, I think I need to start my own band and they said oh we we thought we we knew this was coming long time ago don't forget us when you're rich and famous is what they just said and um i still see them all the time whenever they're in town we play together and um so that's kind of the transition the transition yeah. from the new orleans history and growing up and playing in the basement with my brother to traveling all over the world and starting my project i know you said that um you know, you were on the road when Katrina hit. And Katrina, when we were living in Austin, when after Katrina hit, there was a huge influx of, you know, musicians that came to Houston and Austin. And it was a tough time. But you were on your way back to New Orleans when that happened, right? Yeah, so Katrina, 
uh, you know, they set a storm. There's oh, hurricanes are always hitting New Orleans. Yeah. This one was the big one, but you know, happens a lot. And they s there's a storm coming, and we literally finished our tour. We were on our tour bus uh, near Chicago, so we start heading home. We said, "Well, hurricanes happen all the time in New Orleans." They say we don't run from hurricanes; we drink them because they got the big slushy hurricane drinks. You know, they they drink big down point. there all the time. Right. And um, so they said, "Well, we're going home." And we start making it home, and then we got to Memphis, and the storm was hitting, so we said, okay, let's park. And we just kind of watched the news on the tour bus like everybody else, and the storm hit, and there was a lot of rain and wind, but everything was fine. So Seem it, was, it seemed okay there for a minute. Yeah, the first night, the storm hit, and, you know, it was bad, but uh, the levees hadn't broken. And so we said, all right, here we go. We're going home. And as soon as we started getting into Mississippi... Trees are down. Looks like uh, yeah. elephants had run through a muck. Dinosaurs, and it was—I'd never seen anything like it. And we were still hundreds of miles away. You know, we were in northern Mississippi, yeah. and it was gnarly. And then we realized that we weren't going home. So our booking agent called and said, "Well, you can't go home. You're on the tour bus. Here we go." And we toured for another couple months. We went straight to Madison Square Garden and played. Um, the Big Apple to the Big Easy benefit concert, Katrina. And that's another, we had rehearsals, and I walk in, and Simon and Garfunkel are in the lobby. Wow. Said, hey, hey, Paul. <laughs> Art, how's it going? And they're talking about, uh, how are you kid? And it, it was clearly they hadn't seen each other in years. And what do Paul and Art talk about when they catch up? Oh, the kids are, you know, they're doing summer camp this year and going up to Maine. Simon and Garfunkel talking about their kids' summer camp. I was like, this is wild. And then Elvis Costello walks into our rehearsal space and said, hey, I'm singing with you guys on the benefit. Jimmy Buffett has his arm around me at the end. That turn, Some guy has his arm on me. I'm like, oh, no, hey, Jimmy. He said, we're having a party later. Come by. I said, all right, Jimmy Buffett said to come to the after party. It's wild out there. You know, I mean, the really cool thing about that is that musicians speak the same language. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So when you get a bunch of professional musicians together, they it's so it's such an easy connection, right? Well, as I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge Jimmy Buffett fan, but he's a huge Dirty Dozen fan. Cool. So as much as I was like, holy crap, that's Jimmy Buffett, he's like, man, you guys, you're the real thing. I'm just singing about margaritas. How cool is that? Yeah. So you found your way into writing, and you've been touring and uh, recording. You've got a new album coming out. Is that right? Yeah. We, we just finished a new record last month. That will come out uh, in the fall. And there's a live record that just came out. Um, I thought about it earlier. I didn't bring any CDs or anything, but it's all out there on the website if you want to check McLean out. Jamie McLean Band. It's all there. And yeah, new music. I'm constantly writing. The days that I write a song are always the best days of the week. Mm -hmm. They're, it's elusive, and you never know when it's going to happen. And What's the feeling after you've, after you've gotten that song out? Success. Yeah. Because it's, it's a maddening, impossible um, project. I mean, you could sit there every day and say, I'm going to write a song. And you could write a song, but you can write a lot of terrible songs. Sure. Or just it just doesn't happen. And then one day you're walking to the grocery store and a song just starts popping into your yeah. head. And so it's a strange process, but um, I love it. And I love writing the guys in the band who did so make some noise for the band. These guys learned so much music. It's crazy. <laughs> they were saying that this was a real pleasure because they really love the songs. And I've always... Um, that's the biggest compliment to me, because um, the songs are the biggest part. Those are the stories, and so it's really more than the pyrotechnics. No, on the those guitar. are your babies. I, yeah, I, I've really um, worked hard to to craft that. You guys, I can't thank Jamie enough for making the trip and spending, you know, I mean, not just an evening, but several days to make this happen. So. I want to just say, you know, one more time that the way all of these guys get paid is through your love and donation that you make on Venmo 
or to the tip. So if you're looking on the live stream, please Venmo the uh, link under the ticket that goes to Russ Tomlinson. We'll be checking it at the end of the show. It, you know, anything you can do to contribute something and make Monday Night Live happen. This is a unique experience, I think, to have musicians that are willing to <laughs> put the work in and build the relationships that we've been able to build with the people that come to this show and the, you know, the, the community that we have supporting. On a Monday night, I mean, this is a pretty amazing crowd, right? Absolutely, you guys are awesome. I mean, I, I, I play all over the world, and this is so unique and special. I mean, and you do it really well. It's really well put together, the sound and the lights and the interviews and the band and all of it. And you guys, if you guys don't come, it doesn't happen. They so make like, it happen. You guys are really as much of a part of this as anyone else. So, Well, you know, we hope that it's putting Des Moines on the map in terms of music. You know, there's, there's just an amazing amount of great talent here in Iowa. And we hope that we've been able to kind of showcase that and, you know, to to bring you with your Iowa connections and all these Iowa boys. Johnny Boy! Yeah, Johnny... Johnny Boy O'Rourke. Johnny Boy O'Rourke. Pretty yeah, sure he yeah, was yeah. Irish. I think there's a song in there about Johnny Boy O'Rourke. Don't you? Yeah. All right. I don't want to keep any longer. There's some great music coming up. We have a shorter set, but please hang out and please dance and have a great time. Thank you.
All right, welcome back to the second set. As I said earlier, we, a lot of love songs. This one's probably the ultimate. This was, uh, I sang this song uh, for Ben and Jess Mars, their first dance at their wedding. Oh. And uh, this is going out to Jess Mars.
All that loveliness is for Jess Mars. Yeah, yeah. Best beautiful bride. Hey, anybody that just came in, we're going to send the buckets around one more time. Send that bucket around. Let's fill this up. Fill it to the brim. <laughs> this next song is a, uh, an older tune of mine. And uh, as I was getting ready to come down here, I was just as excited to play this music as I was to hang out with this gentleman and his lovely wife out there on the farm and Adel. And uh, this is about living that good life out there. This is called Country Living.
Talking about the country living. We uh, put a record out called the New Orleans Sessions. Uh, booked a recording studio down there during the Jazz and Heritage Festival. And Ben and I played with uh, the great Anders Osborne. We brought in the Dirty Dozen Brass Band Horns. We got Ivan Neville on there. We got uh, Mark Broussard, Big Sam. And um, we did a bunch of tunes that, they're cover songs. The songs everybody here probably knows. And uh, if you know this one, feel free to sing along. This one features Mark Broussard on the album. He's so big, he's so Benny, he sings like an angel. 
But if you make enough noise right now, this man will get funky on the bass guitar. Make some noise for Ben Mars on the bass guitar, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming out on a Monday night and supporting live music. How's that ladies basketball team doing? We all right? Oh, we're not doing all right? We don't talk about that? We won't talk about that. <laughs> we got booed. We could do one more if you want. I don't know what the time is or what the deal is. Thank you guys so much. Uh, during the break, we went back there and plotted uh, the return. Uh, hopefully, I'll come back again real soon. Uh, make some noise for the band. These guys, total pros. You guys have some real talent in town. And uh, come back next month. These Mondays are super special. This is a real vibe. And um, hopefully, we'll be back. 
again, real soon. Appreciate you guys coming out. If you're on uh, the internet and stuff, check uh, Jamie McLean Band out wherever you hang out. iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook. And uh, can't thank you guys enough for coming out. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks to Ben Mars. See you guys real soon. Thank you, J-Mac. Every time you see me going